Just 24 hours ago, the dream remained quietly alive for 16 of the most aggressive ball strikers golf has ever known. But that's when they unleashed their fury and things got very loud. There were upsets, close calls, long balls, and last second heroics. You got it, just a normal night on the grid. But now only eight remain, that number soon to grow smaller. It's the finals of the World Long Drive Championship, live, loud, and next from Windstar. And welcome to the Windstar World Casino and Resort in Thackerville, Oklahoma, about an hour's drive from Big D, Dallas, Texas, where tonight the crowd is big, the purse is big, as we've all come to see the biggest hitters in the world at the World Long Drive Championship. The weather tonight has been picture perfect. We'll call it 76 degrees, 73 now. We've dropped three. The wind's still a little bit in their face at the southeast five miles an hour. The barometer is steadily rising, which is always a good thing here at the World Long Drive Championship. The grid, it is 60 yard wide, about the equivalent of a football field, and the length 450 yards. And we expect to use every inch of that grid tonight here in the quarterfinals. A lot of money at stake for the winner. He'll walk with a cool $150,000 in total. The purse, a quarter million dollars where everyone here tonight will get paid. And of course, that is a very good thing. But what everyone wants to play for, probably what means more than anything for pride, prestige, it is the world championship belt that only one man will get to put around his waist tonight. One man walks out as the world long drive champion. And with that, we welcome you to the Windstar World Casino and Resort. What an evening we have planned. We're down to the final eight, and tonight we thankfully crown a champion. Ryan Burr, along with two-time World Long Drive champion Art Selinger, and, of course, Michael Breed. You know him from the Golf Fix. Michael, 365 days a year, these guys think about this one night, the pressure that comes. They get one chance. This is the back nine of Augusta for these players. This is their one major of the year. All the work, all the sweat, all the training – for this one night, this one moment, and it's certainly uh, going to be entertaining to watch. We're excited. Art, you're a two-time winner of this event. You know what it's like to be under the lights on that stage when you hear your name called. What are the eight participants feeling right about now? Well, they're nervous, of course, and again, they've won one match each of the last few days to get here. Tonight, if you're going to win, you've got to win three matches. You've got to conserve yourself on the range. Let the adrenaline on the tee help you hit it the farthest. If you are a fan of long drive or you are new to the sport tonight, there are some format changes that we want to bring to your attention. It's new this year. We believe it makes it much more exciting. It proved out last night, and we can't wait for tonight. It all comes down to 2 minutes and 45 seconds. They can hit as many balls as, they, as possible, but again, there's a stipulation there. That ball must come to rest in the fairway or be deemed out of play. Again, a ball must land in and stay in to be counted. They're all hitting that top flight golf ball. Player with the longest shot wins the match. All clubs conform to USGA standards, but there is that last chance ball. If you are down, you will get one more golf ball to eclipse the other player, and if you beat him, that player gets one more ball. What is more exciting than that? A last chance ball. Imagine if every other sport allowed its participants one last chance. Let's go through the bracket. Last night, Breeder, Jason Esslinger, the slinger, the longest drive of everyone, 398 yards. He'd have to be considered one of the favorite. He'll go against Will Hope. And you can see Will is a two seed. So this is a very similar matchup. These guys have, they're similar in age, 29 years of age. They're both very, very fast speeds with the club. And, and I think this is going to be a great matchup. Our other quarterfinal from the Callaway bracket, we get a pass world long drive champ, Tim Burke, against Justin Young. If Tim Burke hits his golf ball, Justin Young has got his hands full. The other quarterfinal matchup from the CDW bracket, Michael Breed, Jeff Gavin, Jeremy Easterly. This is a 47-year-old guy against a 37-year-old old, uh, guy, Jeff Gavin, the senior long drive champion. This is going to be an entertaining matchup. They're going to have a lot of work ahead of them, whoever comes out of this one. It is important to preference. It is match play, so you only, in this quarterfinal matchup, have to beat the guy next to you. And the final match of these quarterfinals, Jamie Sadlowski against the Critter, 44-year-old Jeff Crittenden, who just one year ago came up so close, just a little bit short, and finished second at the World Long Drive Championship. Jamie Sadlowski is a two-time winner of this event, and he is with our Angela Heyman.
Well, Jamie, you have made it to the final eight for a record nine straight years now. To what do you attribute your consistency? Uh, I think a, a golf swing that I can rely on under pressure. Uh, it's something that I work hard at, um, playing a lot of golf. I mean, that's kind of my background. So I've been fortunate to get through rounds. And as we all know, it's not easy to get through rounds. But uh, just consistency year to year of uh, always having a shot when I need it. Hopefully deep down, once we get uh, into these final matches, first up with Critter here, I, uh, I, you know, I can hit another good shot. Nine straight years in the final eight, but you have not won since 2009. What does that say about the level of competition you face? I mean, if you look around this this World Championship, I mean, since 2009, it seems like everybody trains for it now. It's it's There's no breezes. I mean, you look at everybody on the range here, and you see a bunch of different speeds, um, body types, ages. And, I mean, that just proves that, you know, you don't need to be the fastest guy. You need to get through rounds. You need to hit good shots uh, when called upon. So, I mean, it, it'll be an action-packed night for sure. Absolutely. We look forward to seeing you in the final match against Jeff. Thank you very much. Time now to take a look at the Stat Center presented by CDW and Intel. Michael. And I think when you see this here, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of numbers up there. One, that first number is the maximum club head speed. Jamie Sedlowski there jumps off the board at 150. The key to this whole thing, though, ball speed, no doubt. But the key to this is the landing angle. How is this ball coming into the ground? And if you look at Jamie Sedlowski, 39 degrees, that club, that ball's coming down a little bit flatter angle, as opposed to, say, a Jeff Gavin, 50 degrees angle, that ball is not going to release as far. That means that ball has to carry a lot farther. And it, I think that the guy like a Justin Young or a Jeff Gavin, if they're going to catch Sedlowski, they have to get that ball flatter. Jeff Crittenden has the task of taking on Jamie Sidlowski. We just heard from Jamie. Let's go back to Angela as she talks to Jeff. Well, Jeff, you and I chatted a little bit yesterday. We chatted about the shot clock. How does the shot clock affect your strategy? Um, yesterday, I didn't want it to affect it, but it did. Just watching the time click down, I started going faster and faster. I'm not going to let that happen tonight. I'm going to hit seven balls, maybe eight. That's it. Take my time, hit the shots, hit them the way I want to hit them, and hopefully I get some good run out in that grid. And you're going up against Jamie Sadlowski in the final match, two-time world champion. You came so close last year. What is it going to take from you tonight to get it done? Oh, uh, geez, I got to hit. Uh, I got to hit my ball. I got to hit the one that I'm trying to run out. Um, it's going to need to run 40 yards, I think, and uh, I need to fill the grid. So if I can do that, I have a chance. All right. Well, good luck tonight. Thank you. All right, our first match of the night, Jason Esslinger and Will Hogue. Both guys now preparing in the Thunderdome. They will be heading out to the stage in moments. These eight men share one common skill that very few others in the world possess, the ability to hit the ball unbelievable distances. Everyone asks me what's my longest drive. 456. 468 is the longest. And when I tell them 491, they're usually in disbelief. 447 yards. 469 yards is my longest. When you tell somebody you've hit it that far, you get a lot of uh, chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> you got to create speed. 441, you can't teach someone to throw, you know, a fastball 105 miles an hour. 445 yards. When you catch it perfect, it's, it's kind of an effortless feeling. And it gets small real fast. And that's just a great feeling. When my buddies ask me how can I hit the golf ball further, I just tell them, hey, swing harder and hope you catch it. <laughs> what would you rather do, shoot like a 59 or hit a ball like as far as you possibly can? I'd rather pure one, perfect. Golf Channel's presentation of the World Long Drive Championship is brought to you by CDW, people who get it. And by Callaway, breakthrough performance Great Big Bertha returns, leave no yard behind. You can only talk so much about it. There comes a point in time where you just have to go out and hit the golf ball. That's where we're at now. First match, Jason Esslinger against Will Hogue. Let's go to our public address announcer and Tim Matthews. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome from Deerfield, Kansas, making his first appearance in the quarterfinals, Jason Esslinger. <laughs> and from Collierville, Tennessee, 2013 World Long Drive semifinalist, Will Ho.
Esslinger will hit first. Take a look at the matchup, tail of the tape, if you will. And Michael, you said there's a lot of similarities here. Yeah. And Art, you know this, he's gained tremendous distance over the last little oh, say, he, year. He, he was awesome. And Jason Essinger right here, again, I love this setup. I love this for training and hit a ball, and he tried it, and it stuck. a player as we have and what a way to get the night started boy and how about for him Just over 390. 390 how about that to get the night started from the slinger something about the windstar area he loves it he won the lda event here this summer and here's another one and again, Jason's not rushing. I think having that format last night is helping these guys, and they know they've got to slow down a little bit. There's that flatter flight right there. I think critical 380, 380. to be able to take home this championship. You have to be able to flight this ball properly for the grid. Start. Oh, he's filling it up. 390 already on the board. And that's a big club head speed for him at 213. Overhooked it. The four seed Esslinger already on the board. And he killed that ball last night, 398. Let's face it, there's a little more air in his face right here. This is, what, eight yards shorter. It's the same shot, basically, and that's... I just don't know if he can hit it any further than that on this grid. You can see the time. That is what is remaining. Eschlinger's fifth ball. Club had speed up into the 140s. That's great to see. But obviously what he wants to do, and he's trying to better 390 right now. I mean, that's that's the obvious stuff. So he's got to get that club head speed to go as fast as he can. And I think he's going to go for eight golf shots in this one right here. Here comes ball number six. That is top two. But again, that ball has to stop, and that is going to be in the air a long time. It's going to take a while to stop. It'll be interesting to see what what his look at the apex. 170 on that apex. That means when that gets into the grid, that's probably coming down at about a 50 degree angle. 385. 385. Still 390 is best. Probably his last swing. If it's deemed OB quickly by the judge, Shane Day on the tee like it is right here, he can get another ball off. That flag is up. He's ready to hit. Has to be struck. Oh, and he caught it right there at the zeros. So 390 for Jason Esslinger. That will be the number to beat. Remember, he put the number out there last night going first at 398, and it stood for the rest of the evening as the temperatures drop it does become a little harder to reach those numbers. That's what makes match play so great. And now let's see if a fade can beat a draw. Most people at home don't think so, right? When Will Hogue is going to be a fader, if he can beat a guy that hits a draw shot. But again, explain the flat fade that he hits. Well, and that's the thing that we'll get to with Will. You look at the, the when we watch the shot, the, the ball take off here. Watch the apex number here. This should be a lot lower. He is so strong. He is country strong, Michael Breed. 143, good numbers here. And that is gone. That is gone. That's 400 almost. That's, That's over past 400. 400. Over 400 yards. Guess what? That match is over in one ball. Will hold. That match is over in one ball. Oh, no, that's right. We that. have the last ball chance, Art Sollinger. So no matter what, no matter what, the slinger gets another cut at this. It's the beauty of the World Long Drive Championship. You always have that last ball chance. So right now, if you're Will Hogue, you're just trying to improve in the next 100, 1 minute and 50 seconds on your 404. Absolutely. I missed that one there. I was so excited. And if to you're see Jason Esslinger, you're already preparing.
to hit it. You've got two minutes starting right now to prepare yourself mentally to go 405. Mentally? How about physically? I'd be stretching. I'd be doing all kinds of different things. How does a fade go 404? Well, that's the trajectory of the shot that he hit there. That thing's a little bit flighted. And right now, if you're Will Hogue, I mean, candidly, if I'm Will Hogue, I'm thinking 404 is going to win this. I don't want to hit a lot of shots because this can be a long night. You've got three rounds you got to pay attention to. Take your time. And he is. He just and heard your sudden, advice right there. Yep. It's like, I don't want to hurt myself. If I'm going to win, i got to hit two more matches. A trained firefighter. Michael, would you have he the guts ever not to there? What? Would you ever have the guts not to hit any more shots and just say, "Hey, go take that, go Park catch your it. car"? Yeah. Or would you take some cuts? I think at 404, he's got he's got a last chance ball as well too. I mean, he's got 404 and a last chance ball. He's looking at the time. on the on the ball speed. See that apex at 163. Tells you that club face is a little bit more open than he wanted. Look at how he's taking his time. This is, I think, very, very wise. Will Hogue, a drafted baseball player, took one over the fence early here. 4 0 4. He's down to 10 seconds, and to your point, it looks like he will take one final crack at it, and then. It all comes down to the last chance ball for Jason Esling. The beauty of our sport, the beauty of this night, you do get one last chance. Watch this swing here. Look at the extension as he takes this back, full coil, and then that lower body powering in. 404. 404 would put them in a sudden death playoff. So 404 is the number. Does he have it? Let's watch together. to the semifinals, 4-0-4, sends Jason Esslinger home. What a match to get started. Hogue moves on to the final four with 4-0-4. Will Hogue with our Angela Heyman. Man, Will, you just sent one 404 yards. How much do you attribute that shot to the adrenaline pulsing through your veins right now? Uh, I mean, obviously it helps a lot, uh, no doubt about that. You get a little shaky when you get up there and you get a little more into it. But I pretty much stay in the middle, so I don't know. I feel like I hit pretty good. You commented it helps to do it on the first ball. Did that kind of give you some relief after you hit that first ball so far? Yeah, absolutely. I, I knew I hit a good one. So, I mean, if he was going to beat me, he was going to earn it. And uh, if he did, I was just going to shake his hand because that's pretty much all I got right there. So. Crushing one out there past 400 yards, what does that do for you as you advance for the rest of the night? Um, you know, I'm going to reset, get back to neutral, and start over. All right, every round's new, so. All right, well, congratulations. We'll see you in the next round. Thank you. He has worked extremely hard on this swing. He knew the second he hit it. His confidence is way up. Look at this ball when it gets on the grid. Look at it, landed at about 369. And rolled over 35 yards. That is mammoth right now with these conditions. And that's what's coming up next. Tim Burke and Justin Young, they will be match two. That is the act they have to follow. A former world champion, Tim Burke, against Justin Young, next.
2013 Remax World Drive Championship. Yeah! From Orlando, Florida, the 2013 World Long Drive Champion, Tim Burke. And from Mount Airy, North Carolina, making his second appearance in the final eight, welcome Justin Young! And what a matchup this should be. Justin Young, 6'2", 275 pounds. Tim Burke, 6'5", 230. Two monster guys, and what a matchup this will be. As you got Burke, a former champion, pitcher at the University of Miami, Justin Young, a used car salesman, going head to head here. And he's not afraid to, uh, to dress up with some color. Let's listen in. I like to get loud when I hit a good one. I like wearing the flashy pants, and it makes the game a little more exciting. Uh, it's just not your standard khaki. Hopefully it'll energize everybody, get them all screaming and yelling. There is country and then there's Justin Young. <laughs> that is a different brand of country. He's going to have to get his used car sales technique ready here to face Tim Burke. Let's see if he can bomb it. not finding the grid, but the ball on this night. Yeah, see that apex right there, 193 feet. That's way too high. Yeah, he works so far underneath it, Michael. You bet. The top flight tracer. Club head speed down in the 130s. Over 200 feet in the air with that shot again. Yeah. As a downwind player, when he made the other final, he rode that win big time. And again, on this grid, I just think that's just too high a launch. He's probably up there in the 14, 15. Yeah, see that apex is right around 200. It's got to get lower. Got to move that ball position back a bit more. Flatten out that trajectory. <laughs> Losing everything right. Been unable to bring anything into play. And as we've seen, this is when the clock to the participant's right starts to speed them up a little bit. He's doing a nice job of taking his time, but he now is down to one minute and 15 seconds. He's, he's got to be careful. That lower body, we, don't, we talked about this last night, his knees are doing a little sliding towards the target. Look at that, 224 feet. I watched every shot this week, 154 players, okay? and not many can change with the conditions. They just do it one way, peg it high, he works underneath it and he stays with it. And once again, just an inability to draw the golf ball right now. This thing, it's right from the get-go, Michael, and it's not coming back. Well, and now he's got to start thinking, I've got to get this in the grid. I mean, distance is important, but you've got to be in it. He will have his last chance ball no matter what happens, but we're down to 30 seconds. He likes this one, likes it a lot. And again, watch the different action to this ball when it hits the grid versus, you know, the shot that uh, Will Hogue hit. You see how much more softer that lands. Is on the board at 373. It's a number at least to look at. Ten seconds. That had less spin on it, Michael. We'll see what the apex is here. That had less spin. That's going to get a little more roll. A little more. 380, 385, 386. Good shot. 386 for Justin Young. Will it be enough here to move on to the final four? Only Tim Burke can answer that question. Took a while to dial this in. Top flight tracer. And you can see how flat that trajectory is. Right. That's one of the most important things 
for that shot at that club head speed. You get it up in the 150s, like Sedlowski, might be able to get away with a little bit, but when you're down there, you've got to get your distance on the ground. That's a good ball, 386. That's five yards from Esslinger, who killed it. Again, Will Hogue hit a freak ball, but this makes Burke think a little bit. It, I, what a different mentality as a player if you're facing low 370s versus now upper 380s. Tim Burke, a player with extreme confidence, Michael, that believes physically he's as gifted as any player here. He is. He's got it all. Six foot six, trains so hard. Now, this is a question of whether he hit it solidly or not. Well, that's cooking. That's cooking. Not only is that cooking, that's, that's getting moving on. Last chance ball, but it's over 400 yards. Our second ball of the night over 400. And now Justin Young will get one last chance, but Burke thinks he has more. And what Burke wants to do here is set a tone to the rest of the field. Let me show you how far I can hit it. Well, and let's not forget, too, he had a very difficult time getting his ball in the grid over the last couple of matches. Now to be able to start out with that tee shot and then this one that just missed the grid. But again, he, he's trying to send a four, maybe a 410 message. This is the guy that holds the record in the finals at 427. I think right now it's a mental state for him. Pay attention to that apex. The apex on that one, 130. Watch how much lower and flatter his trajectory is. That one open face, he lost it right. Michael, knowing if you're Justin Young right now, knowing you're 90 seconds away from your last chance ball, would you be stretching? Would you be moving around? Would you be sitting in the chair? Well, I, if it's me, I'm going to be doing everything I can. He's obviously resting a little bit. He probably is going to stand up here with about 30 seconds to go and start stretching it out. Burke place that one. We'll see what the number is. Yeah, right now, you know, Burke's just freewheeling. Again, I, he can hurt himself by overswinging and hitting ugly shots. He doesn't want to do that. But again, he's trying to set a message right here. And I think this is one of those things similar to Will Ho. Burke hits so many balls in practice, though. I mean, this guy hits literally hundreds. He cannot tire himself out. Burke will not overhit, but he can get himself out of rhythm. 40 seconds, already 401 on the board. And this is a number again for Justin Young. That does he have four? Does he have 401? I just don't know how somebody in the 130s can make the ball go 401 yards. I just don't see how that's physically possible. Unless he maybe hits a sprinkler that's not covered. <laughs> He's certainly going to have to get a fortunate bounce. Yes. No doubt. Yeah, it's, just, it's a, now it just becomes who's got the fastest car. One final ball for Tim Burke, and he topped his 401 that's already on the board. What a clinic. Big statement. That was a little heel, not as much as the other ones. This is a guy in the past that did struggle with accuracy, but not tonight. Tim Burke peppering the grid and walking off with 401. Now we move back to Justin Young and the last ball chance. One effort, one chance, no practice, no warm up. What do you have in this for this last chance ball? Well, you probably are going to change your, your, your driver. You can see they've got three out there. All the shafts are very similar. Maybe a little bit longer shaft in one of them, but loft on the club face is probably a little bit different. Justin might be going to a little less loft to try to bring that trajectory down. He says he likes to be loud. He'll have a chance to bring this crowd to its feet here. That was his highest club head speed, though, 138. Right. And Tim Burke is moving on. We are two for two, ladies and gentlemen. Two players on to the final four. Both have eclipsed the 400-yard mark. It is a display of power that, frankly, we didn't know we'd see this week. Into the win, these players are defying the odds as Hogue at 404 and Burke at 401 are moving on. What a semifinal matchup that will be. A rematch of 2013 in the semifinals when Burke won.
Tim Burke moving on to the semifinals. He is with Angela. Well, Tim, you got the crowd involved early. How much do you play off the crowd, and how much do you attribute the crowd to that drive that you sent past the 400-yard mark? Uh, it just makes it more fun, I think, for, definitely for me, and I hope for them as well. Uh, it's, just, it's a great experience being up here, so I might as well enjoy it a little bit. You've set a high bar for yourself. What does that do for you as you continue on through the night? Uh, it's going to start, you know, getting harder and harder each round. So uh, that round I was hitting a little weaker shaft, just trying to make decent golf swings. I'm probably going to have to start ramping it up here shortly. All right, well, congratulations. We'll see you in the next round. All right, thanks. So half the final four is set. We'll move on to the quarterfinals. Our ne next match is Jeff Gavin against Jeremy Easterly. That's coming up next, an eight and a 10 seed. One of these Cinderella's will find their way to the final four. It's Gavin and Easterly next. At Windstar Golf Academy, we've got the new gear system, which is 3D motion uh, tracking software. It stands for Golf Evolution and Research Systems. You put a suit on with 28 different sensors. So how do I look? And there's eight high-speed cameras that shoot the person and turn them into a life-size avatar. It will capture their swing and all the data from their club to the body to the club head. It's the only system in the world that can capture all that in one. That line there being drawn on the ground is exactly what your pelvis is doing in your backswing and also your forward swing, which, which is pretty is neat. When you put a swing in 3D, everything changes. To be able to look at a golf swing from space at any angle is so beneficial for the golfer because they can learn so much in such a short amount of time. Gears has you know, allowed the, the view from underneath, like we're looking here, like I've never seen my golf swing that way. Attack angle's really good. Seven and a half degree up, exactly what you want to see in longer. Ever. Yeah. There's a lot of complicated numbers that even I don't understand, but if you can just understand those simple numbers, I mean, you can be a, a, a better player for sure. We're one of 10 in the United States to have the system. I haven't had one guy walk out of there and says, ah, that was all right. <laughs> Not one. Our next match of the evening, ready to send one more player to the final four. Will it be Jeff Gavin or Jamie Easterlin? The next quarterfinal match is set. Here's Tim Matthews. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2014 senior champion from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, Jeff Gavin. And from Ponte Vedra, Florida, Jeremy Easterling! And taking a look at our Callaway matchup. Jeff Gavin, 47 years of age, still out here competing in the open division against Jeremy Easterly, 37 years of age. Gavin's been, here. Stuff. Gavin's been here for a week. He started in the senior division, had a final four. So again, he's got his hands full with Easterly. And Easterly will go first. He's a policeman. Not the swing speed that we've seen so far tonight, Michael. See that club head speed down in the 130s, that ball speed not getting into the 200s. What can he do, Michael, to, to try to generate here? Well, I think what he's got to do is just calm down a little bit get one in the grid and then start to really try to get after it. Michael, when you take the right shoulder over the top, how much speed do you lose versus coming from the inside? Well, a lot depends on what you can do with the breaking of that. In other words, how does the, how does the, how do the lower body, this is all about, to me, this is all about how you're able to use the ground. This entire swing when you're getting power, that's Bobby Peterson, his swing coach. Oh, this one he liked. 
I think it's got a little spin on it. I don't know if it's over 200. See how it checked a little bit with a little extra spin. That spin was a little over 3,000. And Apex going to was very low. There. 377, almost 378, but on the board at 377, it is match play. So the magic thing is to hit it flat, of course, and low spin. So two good swings back to back, although this one's just hanging in there. Gonna touch 370, but not the 377. So right now, can he top his own 377, the 10 seed? Both of these guys have had to overcome the odds to get to the quarterfinals. You're talking about an eight, an eight seed and a 10 seed here. And the 10 seed beat two guys that were in the final eight last year in Connor Powers and Dan Beckman. And Easterly top is 377. Oh, this one's really good. Watch the apex on this one. Ball speed is up. 205, that's the highest. Seven seconds. It does not stay in, Michael. Can he get a last shot off? Right, Jerry, congratulations. Good job. And he's on the board at 377. If needed, he will have his last chance fall. But he does put some pressure on the 47-year-old Jeff Gavin, who needs 378 to at least force Easterly to that last chance ball. He's got a lot of experience. In the World Long Drive Championship. Here's a close up look. Watch how the lower body works here. A lot of rotation. He's going to get a lot of knee flex right here and then use the ground force. And watch that left foot right here. You're going to see it spin out. That's a function of that of, of the player pushing off the ground, much like if you watch uh, a sprinter in the in the blocks where they push off, they're putting energy back into the block to generate speed in the forward direction. Nicknamed the freak. It is now Jeff Gavin's stage. 47 years of age. What a story this would be. High arm flow too. Six foot four, that's a big advantage, obviously. And like I said, he's been here all week in the senior division. Jason Zubak won that senior division. He faced him. And Jeff just swings hard. He, though, as a competitor, I've watched him for about 10 years, he does not let bad golf balls bother him. He would just grab another tee. There's his wife right there, newly married last year. And he just grabs another ball, another tee, and says, let's just try it again. It is the beauty of long drive. You don't have to play your second shot. Coming to be 377. Which finds the grid. But not the roll necessary, about 354. So well short of Easterly's 377 mark. That ball speed's down because that's a toe hit. Center hit gives you the biggest ball speed. 90 seconds left here, 90 seconds for Gavin. Ball speed has to get over 200 miles an hour. That one close to 200. White flag means he's free to go. See the high ball flick. He's getting closer. Yeah, that ball is going to carry right there. Uh, it's still about 340. He's going to have to carry it to get to 377. He's got to carry it over 350 yards with his ball flight. Look at how far forward that ball position is, too. And this is taking a toll again. He has hit with practice and warm up for each round i'm going to say minimum 500 drives he's hit this week he's got to get two off here in the last 25. we'll have his last chance ball michael question is will he need it 
Go for one ball here. Plenty of time on one ball. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. See if he can center punch one here. This is the experience taking his time. Is it going to turn over? That was his highest ball speed of the night. That was big. That was big. Yeah, that, that clearly, as you can see, rolling that out had a chance. 380. That had plenty of distance, just not quite the accuracy. Missed it by about five yards. Last chance ball. The advantage is he's, he is clearly oiled up and ready to go here. And his last ball was his best. Just needs to turn it over a hair. Easterly looks on. If Gavin can go 377 or 378, Easterly then would get his last chance ball. And his wife Wendy is saying a big time prayer right here. He's got to hit the center of that face. The 2014 senior champion. And that is that with 377. The beauty of match play. Jeremy Easterly moving on, our third member of the Final Four here at the 2015 World Long Drive Championship. Our first two guys over 400. Easterly gets into the Final Four with 377. And now the final match of these quarterfinals. Jamie Sedlowski, two-time World Long Drive Champion. Jeff Crittenton, the 44-year-old critter. And they will meet Easterly, whichever one does advance to the final four. Let's go down and talk to our winner. Well, Jeremy, you struggled a little bit to find the grid at first, but you were able to finally find it. What did you figure out on that drive? Finally got the swing where I needed it and made contact like I needed to and finally actually put one in the grid, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness, and that was enough to move on. How will you use that or will you change anything heading into the next round? I'll go over here and fine tune a couple things and then I'll be ready for the next round. All right, well, congrats, Jeremy. See you in the next round. Thank you. I go against Jamie. He's one of the best. Eight, final eights in a row. I'm going to have my work cut out for me. To win that third championship, I mean, it would be uh, pretty surreal. Let's take a look at the Callaway Power Tip gears and MRI for your golf swing. The only system in the world, Michael, that shows what the body, shaft, and head are doing at the same time. It's a phenomenal system. Look at the lines here of the body. What you're going to notice is how much the upper body is turning, and then the lower body. Watch the separation in the knees. Here's a look at what the club is doing. This is a phenomenal system to be able to understand exactly how the body and the club head are dancing together. Great. Line down the line, look at how long the club is going, works under. You can see that shoulder line tilt. That's what they're playing for. We'll put our final player into the final four. Is it Critter or Sedlowski? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the two-time World Long Drive champion from St. Paul, Alberta, Canada, Jamie Sedlowski! And last year's World Long Drive runner-up from Greensboro, North Carolina, Jeff the Critter Crittenden! And taking a look at our Callaway matchup, Sedlowski and Crittenton. Many differences here between these two competitors, including age, height, weight, and definitely when it comes to speed, Sidlowski is quick as anyone we have. I don't think that Jeff is within 12 miles an hour of, of driver club head speed of Jamie Sidlowski. He's going to have to hit a great one, Crit Crittenden is. And I will tell you this, as you can see the flags, the wind is picking up, and that is a huge advantage for Crittenden. Last year, he lost out on $250,000 by 13 inches. It was blowing in Las Vegas. And the critter with that low ball flight took advantage. Let's take a look at the top flight pro tracer on our first shot from Jeff Crittenden. Yeah! 
see a the flat right decision. Right down the middle. Watch it the apex. Hot. It landed hot. 385, 6, 7, 8, 390. He wanted a 40 yard roll and he got a 55 yard roll. Right out of the gate, 390 for the critter. That was the shot he wanted. He asked for a 40 yard roll. He said he'd need it. And again, he just hit it head high fastball right down Main Street and he fills it up. A hundred and eleven uh, feet on that apex. That um, that ball, obviously, at that height, when it gets on the ground, it's going to be moving very, very quickly. Yeah, that ball might go 450 in the British Open. This could spell real trouble for Jamie Sidlowski, the critter, doing it again in the wind. We've seen three players first ball yes hit their longest tee shots. Britain did. Crowd chanting critter, critter. He likes it again. Let's look at the numbers. 205 looks good. Apex. And Flew 340, can. just right down Main Street. Little over 385 right there. Not going to touch his 390, but incredibly impressive at 385. The question now. Does Jamie Sidlowski in this win have 390? He's flattened the ball the whole week. He hits it solid. Again, he changed shafts for a flatter shot. But again, what an amazing job here by Jeff Crittenden. Said he did 30% more outings this year. Hit so many more balls. Came in here a little injured. And look at him. He just loves this stage. He is a giant slayer. What a story, Breed. He said he was only going to try to hit seven or eight, and yet you can see him hustling to that one. He thinks he needs more. I think that's what that means. I think he thinks he needs more than 390. Ooh. And again, you look at the flags above that grandstand right there. The wind's turned dead back in his face. Going to have to hit a low shot. Well, it, considering the rollout he got on the 390, I'm not sure he has more than 390. No. 55 yards a roll is, is really incredible. If he hits this ball in play, he won't get a next one off. It has to be out quick. So he will not hit another ball. Because that ball will not come to rest. And the time has expired. 390. Look at the yeah, difference when he hits it Apex, higher. See? 370, That's 375. 30 so feet higher. That ball's not going to have that rollout. So here we go. It's match play. It's mano a mano. Jamie Sadowski's got to come up with 390. Michael, let's take a look at the critter. Well, watch this right here. This got only 111 feet off the ground. You can see he loves it right away, and it's turning the right direction. Had a little right to left shape. Watch when that, oh, he knows he has it. Well, the wind has definitely picked up quite a bit since we came on the air. Important to stay in your rhythm. See that club head speed and ball speed already much faster. Almost 10 miles an hour faster than club head speed. Ball speed the same. Got a little too much fade, a little bit too much across it, plenty of speed. But just a little too much side spin right there. Again, if he can get that ball just to not cut as much, he'll fly it far enough. Just got to keep it flat. Slightly heel hit. And again, the flags are going. He's interested. He's interested. That's going to be just a hair short. Gives you an idea, though, what is in the bag. Three yards short for Sablowski, minute 40 to go. He'll same let you know. The same shot down the middle will do it. Worked underneath that one. Now the pressure starts to mount. Minute 20. And it's not just with each ball. This is this pressure he's been carrying for years. This is the guy 
who everybody thinks is the man to beat almost annually. Yeah, nine straight finals, and again, Critter took down Joe Miller last year, and he's got Jamie right there. That, was, that one didn't fade. And it's flat, too. Yes. Look 220. at those numbers. 220. That's it. That's it. Wow, what a shot. Last ball chance. Last ball chance for the Critter. That took the lead. But said last is on the Danny ball. Danny celebrating. We'll wait for an official number, 398 it is, 398, still 25 seconds to go. His club head speed's getting faster. Already two balls over 400. This one's gonna have to really roll to get that number, and it is, look at this. Faster, like you said, as the win. Ball speed there, 222. This is going forward, ladies and gentlemen. Third ball of the night. Two is the number, our third ball over 400. And now all the pressure in the world goes to the 44-year-old Jeff Crittenden. Sidlowski just seemed to get better with time. We questioned with the wind picking up. Was 400 in the books for anyone for the rest of the night? The answer is yes with Sidlowski at 402. And now the pressure goes to the critter. Watch this shoulder turn critter right here. Last chance ball. He works so well through the ball. And watch this reaction. He knows right away. Once again, this capacity crowd trying to bring the critter that little extra. Can the, make, can the critter make it roll 70 yards? He knew he had a big jump. We yes. talked to him last night. He knew he had a big jump. What a great match. There's a lot to ask. And Jamie Sedlowski is on to the final four. The semi-finals where three of the four went over 400. Oh, what a semi-finals we have. As good as advertised, two number one seeds, two players that have won the world championship before in Burke and Sadlowski twice. You have Hogue, who has the top ball of the day, and then Easterly, the 10 seed. So a little bit of everything. Let's go to Angela with Jamie Sadlowski who's moving on. Well, Jamie, there's a fine line between getting enough balls in but not rushing. Seems like you did that pretty well. How well do you feel like you just did that? Yeah, I mean, last night was a learning experience for sure. I think being up here once yesterday kind of set the tone of what we need to do. Um, and then, you know, I hit a couple good ones early. I mean, Critter, he just won't ever go away. Um, he's a, Last year he surprised a lot of guys, but I know his, his capability and his potential, and uh, I was not overlooking him. So I know I – I mean, all these matches you need your best, and – um, I settled into a pretty nice groove there and hit some good shots uh, when it mattered. There was a big exhale out of you after that match was over. What was going through your mind when you were exhaling like that? Uh, I mean, just how hard this process is. I mean, it's just it's stressful, and you just never know. I mean, one big bounce, it's the difference to, between a bad bounce and a good bounce. So you just, you just never know. You can't take anything for granted. All right, well, we'll see you in the next round. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Jamie Sadlowski, our final member of the final four. And the second it came off the face, he knew it. Good night, nurse. At that point, you just wait for the number. How about this? Three of the four in the final four, over 400 on a windy night in Oklahoma. It is set, Hogue, Burke, Sadlowski, and Easterly. Champ Spikes, the official golf spikes of the World Long Drive Championship, trusted by the longest hitters on earth. Let's head back to Angela, who's with a interested observer. 
That's right, Ryan. I am with PGA champion Bob Choi. Bob, you are, of course, from Oklahoma. This is your first time to ever come out to a live World Long Drive Championship. What do you think so far? Well, it's fantastic. You know, I've watched every year on television and thought I'd really like to do it sometime. So since it was in Oklahoma and we had the week off, we're here. Willie Wood and I came down and we're having a blast. Uh, well, yeah, you told me that Willie's here with you. He went to grab something to drink. We appreciate you talking to us. What do you think so far? Well, it's unbelievable. I mean, to stand here and hit a ball over 400 yards, um, I just didn't think golf balls were made to go that far. <laughs> and it's uh, it's great. It's exciting for everybody, and it's it's neat that it's here in Oklahoma, and uh, I think everybody's really enjoying it. And, uh, you, of course, you are an incredible golfer yourself. These guys are doing something a little bit different. What kind of respect do you have for what these guys are able to do? Well, like I said, I mean, I just don't know how a golf ball can be hit that far. Um, the club head speed that they generate, I mean, Jamie just swung, I think, at 145 miles an hour, 146, gets close to 150 sometimes. It's unbelievable. Uh, and the working out they do, and, um, I mean, they're, they're athletes, you know, and uh, it's, it's, it's impressive. Absolutely. We appreciate your time. Have fun for the rest of the night. Well, we will. Thank you. Back to you, Ryan. Thanks, guys. It is impressive to say the least. And, Michael, you see what came off of Jamie Sadlowski's club tonight. Look at the consistency of the trajectory. That, to me, is one of the things that's really important. I know he lost a lot of shots to the right there, but he's nothing to the left. And also the apexes are very similar. The final four is set. Three of these men already over 400 yards. What do we get in the semis? You'll have to stick around to find out. Sixty-four strong, they came to the Oklahoma grid, swinging for their shot at long drive immortality, while posting numbers that mystified golfing mortals. So far tonight, we've seen big hits, surpassed only by big time emotion. Now only four remain. Who will join this distinguished legacy? A champion will soon be crowned as the World Long Drive Championship live from Windstar continues. We are ready now for the final four to begin. The semifinals are here. Will Ho, Tim Burr, both guys over 400 yards in their quarterfinal matchup tonight. Burr indicated he has more in the bag. It will be Hogue to go first. And Michael, you've been touting him all night as someone to watch. You were correct. And he jumped right out in his first match with that 404. See if he does it again. Little different weather conditions right now from where Hogue began his night. As you can see the flags, we have picked up some wind in the competitor's face. That, that side wind right there for Hogue's fade. Again, he's really going to have to flatten it out, Michael. It almost has to hit a little bit of a pull. A little pull, a little a bit flat of flat over the top. I think one of the things that Will has to do right now is not think about Tim Burke. Right. Just do the best he can do. Hit it solid, let the numbers take care of itself. He can do it. Again, he's getting a little out of rhythm. And again, one thing to watch for Will, even though he hit that down the middle, he's got more. That ball's running. 381 on the board, 381 going to work so far. Get a number on the board for Will Hogue. But he didn't point at it. He, he, he will point at it when he does that. So again, that flag goes up. Immediately when it's deemed out of play, they're gonna get an extra chance. But again, those flags are picking up now over 10 miles an hour in the face here at Windstar. 80 seconds remain. It's a little higher than he needs. You can see Burke not even watching what's going on with Will. He was stretching. What are you seeing with the numbers, Michael? I'm, I'm seeing somebody that's not loose. And, and it looks to me like when I look at his face, he looks a little tight. We haven't oh, seen him hit that shot all night. He yeah, had two big pull hooks right there. And again, let's check the time here and just see what does he want to do. There's his dad, Dave Hogue. Who, really supports him, comes to every single event, kind of coaches him as well. He's going to slow down and go for quality over quantity here. And that paid off right there, and he pointed at it. That's the Will Hogue point. As Country Strong needs to get high. Oh, that is. 380. With that win, that's big. 390. 
90. That is big with that wing. 3-9 on the number. 20 seconds remain. How many balls will he get off? Doesn't 390 sound so much more than 380, doesn't it? <laughs> That's like the difference between 76 and 77. It's like eight shots, that one number, isn't it? It is. Look at those flags, guys. He's walking after it, but he doesn't like it. And he shook his head, and his time has expired. 90 is a beautiful shot right there, a wonderful shot. That's big. So now... Things will shift to Tim Burke. Tim Burke next. Who, like Hogue, has already gone over 400 tonight and said he has more. And this is a rematch of the 2013 championship when Hogue lost to Burke in the semifinals in Las Vegas. Give me an idea, Art, with this wind changing, picking up speed, how much can that influence a distance here? It can influence, I'd say, from where we started tonight, a good solid 10 yards. But like Michael said, it's all ball flight. But it is picking up. Burke primarily a high ball hitter, but he flattened it out to begin the night. He's got to think low. Yes, he does. And that bowed left wrist, if he can maintain that and not reopen it and keep it there, he'll keep it low. Absolutely. Uh, the reason the clear. He's able to generate that distance. This is what we looked at before from Tim Burke, because he's ready. Oh, that's a beautiful oh, start. It's spinning right, though. Beautiful start, though, down the middle. That's hot. That is hot. That's gone. That is gone. 390. That's four. 400 and... 403, 403 yards from Timber. He said he had more, and he was right. He's going flat into this wind. Both balls tonight right out of the gate over 400 yards for Tim Burke. Apex there 137. And he's already thinking about Jamie Sadlowski or Easterly. And Michael, you've already talked about it. What that gives a competitor to do it early. How it frees you up. And that one's just a little a little soft as it lands in the grid there. Now he's calming down and slowing down. The start he had this week in match play, he couldn't find the grid and he got through and now he's really found his golf swing. And that was his comments. I've got to kind of find my sink and find that golf swing. He found it. Goes down to one knee, knows he just missed it again. With 403 on the board, do you consider really slowing down and not, uh, you, you know you have a finals to come if you can hold on here. Remember, we got the last ball chance. No matter what. Four oh three is the second longest drive tonight. You think it has a very good chance, but you never know. You don't know in long drive for sure. But again, in these conditions, just enormous. Hope still in the chair. The last chance ball remains, so we're not not over yet. Didn't catch that one a solid. You look at the ball speed there again. Didn't hit it in the middle of the face, 212, but ho hum 390. And let's not forget, this is the second time they've been up on the stage tonight. A lot of swings. And that will be that. The last chance ball is not now what awaits. Art, the last chance yes. ball is now what awaits Will Hogue, who has gone 404 tonight. We know he has it in him. He's already done it this evening. 404. Good set of position. Watch the lower body here. Watch these knees. Watch him use the ground here. Step and leap. Go right up. We squared it beautiful. And all that. Watch the balance. It's a, it's a really good golf swing. See the balance? And now everything changes from Burke back to Hogue. He's gone 404 tonight. Last chance ball. And it's a pull hook. 
So Tim Buck is on his way to the finals of the World Long Drive Championship. In both the quarters and the semis, Burke goes over 400, and he's now one step away from winning a second World Long Drive Championship. Easterly or Sadlowski yet to come. They'll work their way on to the finals to meet Tim Burke, who's already there. Let's head down to Angela. Hey, thanks, Ryan. Man, Tim, crank one out past 400 yards again. What does it mean to you to be back in the finals? Uh, it's, it means everything. I mean, this is what we came here to do. So uh, just got to keep it moving. And uh, we'll see who I've, I'm in with the next match, I guess. So let's do it. All right, keep it up. We'll see you in the finals. <laughs> thanks so much. I appreciate it. One more look, Michael. Tim Burke moving on to the finals. It's interesting. I saw him earlier today as we watched this swing. He was working out. He said to me, when I get to the finals, if Sedlowski gets there, who gets the choice as to what happens? In the... He expected to be right where he is right now. He is there. Sedlowski is not. He has to beat Easterly. Easterly, Sedlowski next for a spot in the finals. We're back. Second semifinal matchup. Jamie Sadlowski, Jeremy Easterly. Sadlowski changing away, changing his equipment this week. Yeah, he's going with a crazy shaft, it's what it's called, and it's a new shaft for him. He also got a lot of hot melt work done to that club to put weight in the heel to have less fade in the shot there at the Callaway Test Center. And for Easterly, clearly the underdog here, Michael. Jeremy? He needs to catch one, and, and, and like we saw with the critter, he's got to catch one hot, get some run. He's got to get a, a low one that catches that grid in the right place and gets going. Asking for it to cut. See that club head speed at 135, ball speed, the 205 range. Those are pretty good numbers for him. Asking for the cut, didn't listen. Watch his second attempt with the top flight tracer. But not a lot of curve to that ball. 45 seconds gone to remain. And again, his tendency just a little over the top there. There was an over the top square face shot. Yeah. He's going to have to flatten it out. Probably start at left center on the numbers and then work it a little right of the numbers to get the most roll. Again, needing a cut. You can see he's going to be fairly consistent in his club head speed, right around that 133 to 36 neighborhood. On the two balls he's hit out left, both were over 380 on the rollout. Neither in the grid. And again, here with the rules, that ball totally out of bounds. Shane Day, the judge right there. We know it's OB. He raises the flag, and then Jeremy can get in his shot. That's the rules that we're doing tonight. 60 seconds remain now for the Big East. And he needs to put a number out there, Michael. I mean, he's got to threaten Jamie, make Jamie think like the critter totally made Jamie think. Trip to the finals at stake. Sadlowski sits and waits, rises to his feet. <laughs> See what the numbers are. He likes it. Good shot here. That's flat. That's down that center numbers. That's a great shot. 70. Yeah. Great shot. 380. 380 on the number. And I like how much he took his time. He hit seven golf balls there. He went for quality over quantity. You know, he hit seven golf balls. Last chance ball would remain if that's not enough. But Sadowski now has something to think about. It would take 381 to move the last chance ball back to Easterly. Now Easterly waits and wonders, will he need his last chance ball? The number one seed, Sadowski. Club 
Abed speed again in the 146s and heat. We saw 149, so he's got more than that even. Parents looking on, it's father Dan, his mother Louise. There you go. And similar to his quarterfinal matchup. Struggling right out of the gate, we saw him find his groove, find five balls that found the grid. Interesting format in this game of golf. We, we expect quiet when people are hitting. All of a sudden, this is all about loud, and it can still distract the mind. And now, looks a little rattled right here. He's got to hit one solid. Continues to tick away. You can see his eyes bouncing back from the clock to the ball. I need your help. Come on. With that club at speed 148. The one comforting thing here is the last chance ball when you're in this. Accuracy becoming a problem. Nowhere close, Art. Yeah, absolutely out of rhythm. Just had to hit one on the center of the face. Plenty now of time you, still. Yeah, probably three to four shots left. Depends how he hits them. Down and across. Spin. And he's moving fast now. Obviously, the clock is now playing a huge part of this moment. Needs to go for three quality shots, but he's rushing. Only takes one to get him to the finals. That's going to be close. Hanging in there. Nope. So is he going to go for two quality shots or try to rush three in here? He's going to get three off. He's got to chase that champ T right there. Losing it to the right. Yeah. That's just not square in the face, and he's under pressure right now. You can see it in his face. It's been six years since he's won. Barking see where this it. ball is. Looking for a T. This is becoming a problem. Losing everything to the right. Clock's down to 10 seconds. Yeah, he will get one more ball off. Calm down. Jamie Sidlowski yeah. unable to, find the, to grid. find the grid will now rely on his last chance ball to advance to the finals. He's going to gather himself, try to find one more shot here, and again, 0 for right there. He's been waiting six years to hit a clutch shot. His girlfriend Larissa right there. Shot clock is off. This is coming up in the bottom of the ninth, trailing by a run. You got to hit a home run. And, and nobody has pulled off this last chance ball in two nights. Jamie Sidlowski, one chance to move on to the finals. No, it looks probably going to be out of play right. And that tells the story. That one had enough to get by 380, but unable to find the grid. Jamie Sidlowski. Unable to find the grid in Easterly. The underdog finds himself now one match away from becoming the world long drive champion. What happened, Michael? I think this whole thing turns into he's getting faster and faster and faster. He gets out of sync, works underneath it. Watch what happens with the shoulder line as he comes through here. That right shoulder starts to go down instead of through. I can't quite that. close that face, and he's holding on to that. That's just pressure. That left arm, though, has always been away from him right there through impact. Didn't get the toe to release and square up. Couldn't find the grit. A one seed and a ten seed now into the finals. Tim Burke, who's been here before, will meet Jeremy Easterly in the finals. The Big East with Angela. Well, Jeremy, 
You are on to the finals. What was going through your mind as you were watching two-time world long drive champion Jamie Sadlowski up here on the tee? Well, I mean, you don't want to see anybody sit up here and struggle. I mean, you want everybody to hit their good ball. Um, it's, it's painful, but it is a win. I'll take it. In the finals, you will face Tim Burke. He's the only other guy in the top eight who has won a World Long Drive Championship. What will it take from you to beat Tim in the finals? Oh, obviously, I mean, it's going to take a good ball. I mean, he's, he's going to hit it hard. I'm going to try my best to hit it the hardest I can. Sounds like a good plan to me. All right, we're excited for it. See you in the finals. Thank you. The finals is set. And for Jamie Sedlowski, the realization that he now must wait another year for him to once again claim the World Long Drive Championship. That is a lonely walk. But for Burke and Easterly, the Easterly, the walk is to the finals. One shot away from $150,000 in the World Championship belt. The finals are set. It's Cinderella against the top seed. take a look at the Callaway power tip. Our finals are set, not what anyone expected. Tim Burke, the one seed, and Easterly, the 10 seed, Michael. Here's a little look at their swing. Tim Burke on the left-hand side. You're going to see great extension. Watch when he gets to the top of the swing. You can see the left wrist, the lead wrist has a little bow in it. That face is a little shut right there. You can see that. Watch how far that club travels. Now, when we go over to Easterly here on the right-hand side, he's going to have a very similar position with that wrist, but the club's not going to travel nearly as far. It's going to stay a little bit closer to parallel to the ground. Face is still shut, wrist is still bowed, but look at the difference in the length that that club has traveled. A lot of body rotation, and then look at the knee of Burke as he steps into that left side, pushes up and away. Very full finish. You're not going to see as much ground force with Easterly here. That's why he doesn't generate the club head speed. But still, a very fast motion. Arms are moving out and away from him a little bit more. And a little bit later release. You can see how he just doesn't quite use the ground in the same fashion. Highly effective golf swing and certainly very fast. Now, Art, it is the beauty of match play. You just have to beat the guy in front of you. And it's now Easterly and Burke for the 10 seed. He needed some help and he got it. Easterly has been the spoiler all week. Again, he beat two finalists from last year and he beat the guy who's made nine straight final eights. And for Jamie Sidlowski, Michael, unable to find the grid in the semifinals. The club head speed was there, but the accuracy was not. And you can see how far off the gritty is the majority of those shots, just two shots left, but the majority of those shots to the right. Let's head to Angela, find out what happened to Jamie Sedlowski. Well, Jamie, you come up short again this year. I know it's unfortunate. We really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. What happened on, on that semifinal match? Why were you not able to find the grid? Uh, you know, I don't know. Just the wind kind of kicked up a little bit. Um, and I hit a couple of decent shots up the right that just the wind kind of ate it up. Um, try to make some corrections but yeah I mean everything was going right I hit a couple before I left and I was hitting it good and you know it's just one of those things that a little out of rhythm maybe uh like like I've said before I mean it doesn't matter how many times you've been here there's still pressure there's still um there's a ball to beat so you know it kind of hurts a little bit when you beat yourself um and, and and not hit a good shot in but uh you know that's life man you've been here so many times what do you take away from this week Oh, you know, I felt great coming in here uh, from the first round on. I mean, I felt great and just, you know, it's hard. Uh, maybe I took those first two world championships for granted. Maybe I didn't enjoy them enough uh, to realize how hard this is. But, um, you know, falling short, uh, you know, it hurts. Uh, there's a lot of time and effort like everybody else here. But, um, you know, go back to the drawing board and uh, we'll go from there. Well, we really appreciate your time again, Jamie. And uh, we will see you, obviously, hopefully next year. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Jamie Sadlowski heading home, but these two competitors, Burke and Easterly, heading to the stage one more time, where only one will emerge victorious.
from 64 to 2. That's how far we have come at the Windstar World Casino and Resort. The finals is set for the World Long Drive Championship where only one can emerge victorious. The finals is set. Let's get to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2015 World Long Drive Final from Orlando, Florida. Welcome back, Tim. And from Ponte Vedra, Florida, welcome back, Jeremy Easterly. It is David versus Goliath. You simply look at the Easterly numbers, first. and it is difficult to come up with a scenario how Jamie Easterly can defeat Tim Burke, but you would have said the exact same thing against Jamie Sidlowski. In fact, might have even given it a heavier favorite because Burke's club head speed doesn't peak at what Jamie's peaks at at 150. The chance that Jeremy has, Easterly has, look at that landing angle. If he can get that thing down into the 35 range and Burke is unable to control that, as windy as it is, he's got a chance. Once again, Burke electing to go second as all of the favorites have chosen to go second tonight. I honestly, if I was Burke, I would go first and put a number. He's the 400 yard guy here. Put something out there and get Jeremy out of his rhythm. Right now, Jeremy doesn't think he has to do anything except hit solid golf balls. I really think going first would have been a better advantage. See, he's going to be really trying. Look at how that clubhead speed went down there. That lower body of his. He has to come over the top to generate the clubhead speed that he needs. And for a cutter to face about now, about a 12 mile an hour side wind out there, Michael. It's picked up. He really has to cover the golf ball. Yes, he does. It was flatter, definitely more over the top. Look at the ball speed picks up. So three. much pressure. So much money on the line, so much prestige on the line. And for a 10 seed to find himself in the finals. Again, it's, it's happened all week. And in theory, you would think this one is curtains, kind of like the Sadlowski match. But in long drive and in match play, it's like going out and playing one hole. Anything can happen. Needs to find the grid first and foremost. If there's been one recipe all night, it's been find the grid and then relax and play your game. And let's also not forget that, as you pointed out our earlier, Tim Burke did not have great success getting that golf ball into the grid. That has to have played into his mind, and he's just seen Sadlowski do what nobody wants to do. And what Easterly did to Sadlowski is he hit a 380 ball, and that's a number that you'd like to see. Anything in that 380 makes a guy think. We're in the grid. It got hot. And we're over and 380. We're hot. got hot. 86, 86. 386, by far his best hit of the night with a minute remaining. And that number is scary. Over that 380 mark makes the power player think. Oh, this one he really got. That left side's not what that right center is, though. Look at the ball speed get up to 208. It's not that side, though. That right, that right center. Where he hit at 86 is enormous right now. Enormous. 374, win. 374. Talk about getting everything out of it right there, Michael. That right side of the of the grid definitely seems a little faster. 63, 255, a policeman. What a great number to put up. He put 80 against Sadlowski, 86 now against Burke. And just switched drivers with his last ball. 386, you can see it's something for Burke to think about twice tonight over 400. I love how he stayed in rhythm all night. He never hit more than seven golf balls. He, you know, he never rushed. Here we go. Regardless of what happens with Burke, one of these two finalists will get the last chance ball. We've yet to see a player take advantage of that last chance ball. Yeah. You can imagine the pressure that exists when you know you really own one swing. Oh. This is high moving down, as you said, Art, down on the right-hand side. Look at how much curve there was to that ball that got hot. Great upper body rotation. Watch how he starts to really move into the lead leg. 
But that upper body did some covering there, which is exactly what he has to do with that motion. Shot of the week for him right there. Awesome job. When he needed it most. Jeremy Easterly steps up and finds himself now in the chair and can watch Tim Burke. That wind is and picking that, up. That yeah. wind is really moving right there. Burke's going to have to stay flat and low. Here's where it's if his golf swing will hold up. This is the pressure because everybody expects him to win this. It's a big mental battle right here. If he, he knows has, he has the speed. If he has had a weakness coming into the week, it has been accuracy. It hasn't been a problem in the quarters or semis. Oops. Oops. And it might not be a problem here. Let's get a number. Ball speeds down. He knew it quickly. He grabbed that. another thing. The ball speeds down. He had to hit that high in the face right there. Yep. No, no, no. I think he Three thinned that. Seven, I think he caught it low. Yeah. See the apex at 117. 15 yards shy of Easter. Yeah. He likes this one. And that's huge. Huge. 390. 8 yards longer than Easterly. So a minute 30 left. 90 seconds off. As Easterly rises to his feet knowing it may come down to the last chance ball. And the record holder in the finals at 427 is going for more. Another one finds the grid, won't approach his 394 that is the number for Burke to top his own best here at 394 twice tonight he's gone over 400 60 seconds remain second place in 2012 wins it in 2013 and right now he's on the brink of joining a club to win his second world long drive championship title the crowd rises to the feet Can Tim Burke say Tim Burr one more time and drop the redwood on the grid? Glances at the clock. He was so disappointed last year being out so early. It ate at him, and he is back with a vengeance. We'll likely get just one more here. Take your time. Easterly will have to try to find eight yards in his last chance ball. Great performance right there. And Burke will now sit and watch as the World Long Drive Championship has come down to one final shot for Jeremy Easterly. Top flight pro tracer, this is Tim Burke. This has flattened that trajectory out. And Burke now will watch as Easterly, no clock, just his thoughts, crowd on their feet with anticipation of one final swing. And is Burke watching or trying to prepare for another shot, right? The tee box is open. Does Easterly have 394 in him? Let's find out. time winner. Unbelievable performance. He gets that second title and he's wanted that belt back and it is his. 
supreme confidence, Michael. He knew from the second he stepped foot in Oklahoma that he was the man to beat. He thought he was the man to beat last year. He was the man to beat this year. The longest hitters in the world. It comes down to one day, and on this day, Tim Burke reigns supreme. Golf Channel's presentation of the World Long Drive Championship is brought to you by CDW, people who get it. And by Top Flight, the official golf ball brand of the World Long Drive Championship. Well, Tim, you won the 2013 World Long Drive Championship. You are now the 2015 World Long Drive Champion. What does this second title mean to you? It means everything. I mean, I worked pretty hard. I had a very disappointing year last year trying to defend. So uh, just kind of dedicated this year and just got a better golf swing, learned to handle the pressure a little better, and then everything came together tonight, so I feel very blessed. Now we're going to welcome in Art Selinger, the founder of Long Drivers of America. Art, I'll turn it over to you. Tim, what a great performance. You join an elite club winning your second title. I'm going to start out by giving you your winning top flight golf ball. Fantastic job tonight. A great run you've had, a runner-up and then a win. And again, you talked about last year, but then backing it up with another win, an amazing performance. I'm going to introduce right now the assistant general manager here at the Windstar World Resort and Casino, Zach Colbert, to present some important stuff for you right here. Congratulations, I'm uh, here to present you the winning check and uh, we really appreciate everybody coming out with all your support. It's been a great event. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. $150,000 right there. Switch. And Tim, you said you wanted that belt back, and I'm going to have Michael Ferguson, the general manager of golf operations right here at the Windstar World Casino Resort, to give you the championship belt. On behalf of Windstar World Casino and Resort, we talked about this earlier, Tim. You were the betting favorite in all of us in the Golf Academy. Congratulations on winning the 2015 World Championship. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, Tim, how does it feel to have that belt on, and how are you going to celebrate? Oh, man, I have so many friends here. Uh, everybody from Trans Perfect Translations came out, so I feel very blessed to have such a good sponsor with them. Uh, my trainer, Trevor Anderson, is here. So we're going to do a lot of stuff. Michael Pinky, Vision Quest Wealth Management's here as well with Steve Laska. So just want to thank all my sponsors, of course, Lance Reeder with Crank Golf. Thanks so much for everything you've done for me throughout my career. And, uh, of course, Under Armour, I can't forget them. So thank you, Ryan O'Keefe. Leon Duncan, Ryan Keel, that whole Under Armour family. Well, congratulations. Thanks for putting on a good show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Ryan, back to you. Tonight, Tim Burke emerges as the one, the number one long driver in the world, the world long drive champion. Once again, our 2015 world long drive champion is Tim Burke. Coming up next here on Golf Channel, it is Golf Central. For Art Salinger, Angela Heyman, and Michael yeah. Breed. I'm Ryan Burr saying good night from the Windstar World Casino and Resort. One more time, it is Tim Burke as the 2015 World Long Drive Champion. <laughs>